Hello everybody, Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. Today I'm going to pair the weather with an artist, just like you would pair a good wine with whatever meal you're eating. Um, and the weather here in Poughkeepsie, New York today is sort of dark, it's dreary. I heard some thunder in the distance, so I'm going to pair that weather with a darker band from the depths of the 60s, America's answer to Black Sabbath. They never really reached that sonic heaviness of Black Sabbath, but, you know, they sort of teetered on it. I'm talking about Blue Oyster Cult, all right? And I'm going to be centering on their first three records, often known as the Black and White Years because the uh, artwork gave the listener and buyer a black and white motif to enjoy. And you'll see that as I show you these three album covers. Very difficult albums to rank because they're so similar and they're so good. I mean, any three of these, if you toss them up in the air, and I wouldn't advise that with vinyl or CDs, but say like you're feeling, feeling crazy, toss them up in the air, pick one of the albums, throw it on your turntable, you're going to be happy. Any of these three records rule, and I'm talking about the debut from 1972, simply entitled Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, 1973, the second album entitled Tyranny and Mutation. And Secret Treaties from 1974, the year I was born. Just a little history, just a tiny little bit of history for you. Formed in Long Island, 1967, all the way back in 1967. They were originally called Soft White Underbelly, which is a cool name. I like Blue Oyster Cult better, but uh, as I said, mixed many different styles of music, love the occult themes. I think that that's probably where they got that sort of connection to Black Sabbath. As I said, even though they weren't as heavy as Black Sabbath, but still a very, very cool band. So let's rank these. It's going to be a quick ranking, only three records. Coming in at number three, are you ready? From 1972, the debut Blue Oyster Cult. Look at that album cover. There's their symbol right there. Every band needs a symbol. Check out the back. There's the train tracks to hell. So if you're ever traveling around and you see this area, don't go near it unless you want to go there. But, um, you know, great out. As I said, any of these albums are great. I'm putting this at number three. Uh, Transmaniacon MC, Killer, uh, then came The Last Days of May, Stairway to the Stars. Um, I love the psychedelic sort of Middle Eastern flavor of She's as Beautiful as a Foot. You've got Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll. Workshop of the Telescopes is cool. Just a really killer record. And if you remember, I got this album for 50 cents at a, at a library sale. I'm still flabbergasted by that and next coming in at number two tyranny and mutation from 1973 this happens to be a music on vinyl pressing this is a very up-tempo fast heavy record you've got uh well you got two sides one side one's the black side two is the red and uh, I love the red and the black. I love OD'd on life itself. Hot Rails to Hell is cool. Seven Screaming Diz Busters. I don't know what a Diz Buster is, but it sounds so cool. Side 2, Just as Good. Wings Wetted Down. Teen Archer. And it ends with Mistress of the Salmon Salt, which is such a cool tune. And there's that black and white motif again for you. Kind of mixing a little bit of red in there. And I love how they put their symbol on the top. Just a cool band. And that leaves number one, my favorite of the three, Secret Treaties. And there are the guys hanging around that uh, bomber airplane. I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about airplanes, but very cool. This includes one of my favorite Blue Oyster Cult songs, and that would be Astronomy. But you've also got Career of Evil on here, Subhuman, Dominance and Submission. Um, I love Harvester of Eyes. It ends with Harvester of Eyes, Flaming Telepaths, and then Astronomy. Just a great album. 
And, uh, you know, as I said, any three of these records are great. Listen to them if you have not. They went on to make, you know, awesome albums past this. But a lot of people think that these three are some of the best. And I would agree. So there you go, my ranking of the black and white years. What would your ranking be? Interested to know. Bye, guys.